In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this abstract honeycomb spheres looping animation with geometry nodes. So other than just adding an icosphere as the base mesh, the entire thing is going to be created with geometry nodes, and then the materials are going to be created procedurally with Blender shader nodes. And then I'll also show you how to animate it and make it a looping animation, and we'll be adding that into Blender's video editor and adding some cool sound effects. And we're also going to be rendering this with the EV rendering engine. Now if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase the project files, you can get that on my Gumroad store, and you can also get access to it by joining my Patreon page. Now if you're a beginner to geometry Geometry nodes and you want to learn all the basic fundamentals of geometry nodes, then I've created a geometry nodes for complete beginners tutorial series on my YouTube channel. And I'll have the link to that tutorial series in the description if you'd like to check it out. And I show you all the basics of geometry nodes. And then in the tutorial series, I also show you how to create this flower object where you can draw curves and then flowers will be generated along the curve. Now for this tutorial, I am going to be using a few resources online, and I'll have all the links in the description. So on polyhaven.com, I'm going to be downloading this Brown Photo Studio 02 HDRI, and we'll be adding this into the background world to get some nice lighting and reflections. And I'm going to be downloading the 1K version and the HDR version of this HDRI. And then at the end of this tutorial series, we'll be compiling the rendered frames together in Blender's video editor to create the looping animation, and I'm going to be downloading a few sound effects and adding those into the video editing. So I'm going to be downloading this Bubble Echoes Low sound effect. This is a free sound effect from freesound.org, so again, link is in the description. And as well as that, I'll also be downloading this Dunes sound effect, and this is kind of like some ambient noise that I'm going to be adding to the background of the final animation. All right, so here we are in a new scene in Blender, and you can see my screencast keys are right down here in the corner of the screen. So I'm going to start by just selecting everything, and I'll hit X to delete, and we'll just delete everything. So I'll now go to the Add menu, I'm going to go down here to Mesh, and I'm I'm just going to add an icosphere for the base, and we'll be adding geometry nodes to this sphere. So you can now click right over here to go to the geometry nodes workspace, or you can also click here in the corner and drag out to split the window, and then you can click here to change the editor type and change it to the geometry node editor right here. I'm going to close this though because I'm just going to click over here to go to the geometry nodes workspace. So let's click on new to add a new geometry nodes modifier to this icosphere. So I'm first going to go to the add menu, and I'm going to start to search for subdivision surface. Let's add the subdivision surface, and we're going to drop it here between the group input and the group output because I want to give it some more detail. And let's turn the levels up to two so you can see it's now nice and subdivided. So I now want to extrude out those faces. So I'll go to the add menu, and I'm going to start to search for extrude, and we're going to add the extrude mesh node. And let's just drop this here. So now you can change this offset and that's going to extrude out those faces. Now on the offset scale, I'm actually going to turn this to a negative value so it extrudes it in and I'm going to use negative point 1, 8. So negative 0.18, and now you can see that each one of those faces are extruded in, and so now we have all those little holes there in the sphere. Now as well as that, I kind of want to inset the faces, so we're going to go to the Add menu, and we're going to start to type Scale, and we're going to add these Scale elements, and let's just drop that right there. Now you can see if I drag this Scale value, it's just scaling the entire thing, but I want to give it more information for what I want it to scale. So we're going to use this top right here. So this is going to be the highest points, so just the top of the mesh. So we'll put the top into the selection. Now I can drag this scale and you can see it's doing something different. So if I just drag the offset scale really small for now, you don't have to follow along with this. You can see now the scale, if I drag this, it's basically insetting those faces. So if I zoom in here, you can see now it's almost like we're insetting that, like if we were to hit the I key in edit mode and inset those faces. I'll just press Control Z though to undo that to bring it back. All right, so now I can change the scale. And for this scale, I'm gonna use a 0.45, just a 0.45. So it's really sharp right now, and so I wanna subdivide it again. So we're gonna click on the subdivision surface, and I'll press Shift D to duplicate it, and let's drop it here after the scale elements. So now we're subdividing that object, so it's giving it even more detail. And I'll just leave the levels to two. So now I wanna distort it so it looks a bit more wavy. So I'm actually gonna to go to the Add menu, and I'm gonna search for a wave texture. And let's drop the wave texture right down here. 
Now I want the wave texture to distort the placement of the geometry. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for the set position node. And we'll put the set position right here after this subdivision surface. And then this wave texture is eventually gonna go into the position to actually change the position of it. But right now that's not working because you can see this is color data, but then this is vector data. So I need to unplug this. I need to add some nodes here to convert it to the correct data. So what I need to do is mix this with the position. So if I go to the add menu, I'm gonna to go to the search and I'm gonna search for the position node. So let's drop the position node right here. So I'm gonna put the position value here into the vector of this wave texture. And then I wanna mix the position and the wave texture together. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for the vector math node. So start to search vector and then you can add the vector math right down here. So we'll choose vector math. We're gonna drop this here and we're gonna change the type to multiply. So we're now gonna put this color here into the bottom one and then we're gonna take this position here and we're gonna put that into the top one. So now I can take this vector and I can put it into this position and you can see it's now distorting it and it looks really sharp right now, but we will fix that. So to fix these values, we need to change the color of the waves. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for a map range. Let's add the map range. This can edit the colors. So we're gonna drop it right here after the wave texture and then we can drag the from min and the from max and you can see we can make it more strong or less strong. So the from min, I actually wanna make this a negative value. So I'll make it negative 6.4. So just a negative 6.4. And then from the from max, if I just make this bigger, I wanna make the from max 1.26. Those are the values I've found to work pretty well. Now that doesn't really look that good right now, but that's because I wanna change some of the wave settings. So right now the waves are way too big. So this scale here on the waves, I'm gonna turn this down to like a 0.3. And then this distortion, I wanna distort it a lot more, so I'll turn the distortion to a 50. Now by turning up that distortion, you can see the waves are much distorted. And so you can see there's all these waves here and they're kind of looping around and that looks much better. And then these other settings, I'll leave how they are. Now later on in the video, when we do the animation, I'm gonna to wanna to actually animate where those waves are. So what I'll do is go to the add menu and I'm gonna search for another vector math node. So we'll add the vector math and I'm gonna put this here after the position, but before the wave. And I'll just leave it to add. So the position is gonna go into the top one. So now this bottom one here, these values can actually move around the wave. So we're gonna use this to animate the wave and make it look random. Now the last thing that I wanna do is shade the whole thing smooth. So if we go over here to the end here, the group output, we'll go to the add menu and we're gonna search for the set shade smooth and we'll stick this here after the set position. And that is it for the geometry node setup. So it's a pretty simple setup. So now let's actually animate this. So what I'm gonna do is click right up here when the crosshair appears and click and drag down to split the window. And then I also wanna click here and I'm gonna click and drag over and then let go. And why I'm doing this is because I wanna add a timeline. So if you already have a timeline down here, then that's great. Uh, but if you don't have a timeline, you can split the windows here. And then I'm gonna click and choose the editor type and I'll choose the timeline. Now you can make this however long you want. I wanna have it be 500 frames. So here on the end frame, I'm gonna change this to 500. 500. And so that's gonna be the size of the looping animation. So I'm now gonna make sure I am on frame one. So you can drag the timeline here to frame one or right here, make sure that the current frame is on frame one. Now these vector values here, I wanna click and then drag down and let go to change all the values at once. And I'm gonna turn them all to one. So I'm now gonna hover my mouse over these values and press the I key and that is going to insert a keyframe. Now what I'm gonna do is go halfway in the very middle. So half of 500 is 250. So you can just click right here on the current frame and you can type 250 or just drag here to frame 250. And I now wanna change these values. So I'm gonna click and then drag down and then let go. And I will type two and then enter. So they're all changed to two. And then again, hover your mouse over the value and hit the I key to add a keyframe. Now here on the current frame, I'm gonna type in 501. I'm not going to frame 500, I'm going to frame 501 because I'm gonna be adding the same keyframes at the end frame and that way it'll be a looping animation. But if frame 500 and frame one were the same values, then there would be one spot at the starting and the end where the frames would be the same. And so it wouldn't be a perfectly seamless looping animation. So that's why I'm going to frame 501. So now I'm gonna click and drag down and then just type one and then enter. And then again, I will hit the I key to add a keyframe. So if I press the space bar to play this, you can see it's gonna get faster and then it's gonna kind of slow down here. And then over here at the end, it's gonna kind of go back. And so this way it'll be 
a looping animation. Now to make this animation a little bit more cool, I wanna also rotate the object. So I'm gonna click here on the current frame and I'm gonna change this to frame one. And then with my mouse hovered here in the 3D viewport, I'll press the I key and I'm gonna insert rotation. So now here on the current frame, I can again type in 501. So that's one frame after the end frame and I'll hit R to rotate and then I'll hit Z to rotate it on the Z axis. And then I can type in 360 because I wanna rotate it all the way around and then hit enter. I can now hit the I key again and I can again insert rotation. So now if I play through this, it starts out slow and it gets faster and faster and then it goes to 500 and it will be looping. Now I want this to be rotating at a consistent speed. So I'm gonna click right up here to change the editor type and I'm gonna change this to the graph editor. And then what I wanna do is I wanna click right here on the object transform and you can see there is a Z rotation. So if you click on this, it's gonna show you that Z rotation. And if I hold down the control key and then click and drag with my mouse wheel, I can make this smaller. So I'm just going to click right here to select this keyframe here, and then I'm going to press the L key, and that's going to select all of the other keyframes which are on the Z rotation. So I'm making sure that just these two keyframes are selected. So I'm now going to press the T key, and that's going to bring up the set keyframe interpolation, and I'm going to choose linear. This way, now when I play it, it's going to be moving at a consistent speed. You can see there isn't any bending in the keyframe. And so now when it goes to the very end, it'll jump back to the very starting, and it will be a perfectly seamless looping animation. And then also we should save this project, so if you haven't saved it yet, click on File and click on Save As and save your project. All right, so that's it for the animation, so we can now do the lighting. So I'm gonna click right here to the layout just to go back to the original layout so I can see the whole thing. And I'm gonna go right over here to the render properties, and here on the render engine, I'm gonna change this to Eevee because I wanna use Blender Eevee. And I'm gonna hold down the Z button and move my mouse up into the rendered view to see what that is looking like. And you could do this in cycles if you want to, but I actually think Eevee looks a bit nicer. I think Eevee works really well for these kind of sci-fi abstract animations. Now here on the EV settings, I want to turn on the ambient occlusion and the bloom, and I'm also going to make sure to check mark the screen space reflections and also the motion blur, and that's just going to make EV look nicer. Now I want to add in the HDRI that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, so I'll click here on the world properties, and then I can click here on the yellow dot next to color, and I can choose environment texture, and then I'm going to click on the open button to open up the HDRI. And here's the HDRI that I'll be using, it's the Brown Photo Studio, and again the link will be in the description to this HDRI. HDRI on Polyhaven if you want to download it, and I downloaded the 1K HDR version. So let's click on that and click on Open Image, and now you can see it's giving us some nice lighting. But here on the strength, I'm just going to turn this down to like a 0.2 so it is less strong, because I also want to add some area lights to light up the object. Now I do also want to add a camera, so I'll press Shift A for the Add menu. Let's go down here and add a camera. And then what I want to do after I add the camera is I want to press the 1 on the numpad and that's going to go to the front view. Then I can press Control alt numpad 0 Control alt numpad 0 will bring the camera to where I am. So now it's just looking straight at the object. And then if you click here to go to the object data properties, this focal length here, I want to turn this up to like a 60, so it just kind of zooms everything in a bit and makes everything look a bit more flat. Now I also want to make it a square image, so let's click here on the output properties, and here on the X and Y resolution, I'm going to change this to 1920, and then here on the Y, I'm also going to change this to 1920. So that'll just be a square image. All right, so I'm now going to be adding some lights around the object. So I'll go to the add menu and let's go down here to light and I'm just going to add an area light and I'll hit G to grab, just move the area light over and I'm also going to rotate the area light up like this. And this area light, I'm actually going to rotate it down and then move it up a little bit, so kind of like that. And then let's click over here to go to the object data properties and here on the area light settings, I'm going to turn the power up to a 40 and then here on the color I want to make this kind of like a red color so let's make this like a really bright red something like that and also on the shape here I'm going to change this to rectangle instead here on the type and then we can just drag this X size and we can make it much longer so just like that so I'm now going to press shift D to duplicate this light Let's go to top view by hitting the seven on the numpad and I'm gonna rotate this light over. And I can also rotate it over like this and kind of have almost like a backlight. And then for this backlight, I'm gonna turn the power up really big to like a 300 so it's much brighter. And then for the color here, I'm gonna have it be a bright blue color. 
So something like that is pretty good. So if I go into the camera view, you can see there's kind of like a little rim light there. And I actually want to maybe bring this over a little bit more. And then I could also here on the X size, turn it up so it's even longer. So now we have a bit of a bigger rim light. And as well as that, I want to have one light kind of coming from the bottom up. So I'll press Shift D to duplicate this light. I'm going to rotate it up just like that and rotate that over. And then for this light, I'm going to turn the power to a 200 so it's not quite as strong. And here in the color, I'm going to make it kind of like a darker blue. So something like that, kind of bring it up a little bit. There's kind of like another light there. So if I go into the camera view, maybe I'll make this a little bit smaller. So kind of a blue light here, then a light blue light back there, and then kind of a red light. Now to make the colors look a bit nicer, let's click over here on the render settings and I'm going to scroll down. And here on the color management, I'm going to use the view transform of filmic. And then the look here, I'll change this to very high contrast to make everything more saturated and contrasty. All right, so we can now do the material. So I'm going to select the object here and then we can click here to go to the shading workspace. So in the shading workspace, I have the 3D viewport right over here. I'm just going to go into the rendered view and then I have the shader editor right here. So I'm going to click on new to add a new material and I can just rename it like abstract. So I'm going to make this shader kind of metallic. So let's turn the metallic value all the way up to one. So it's kind of shiny. And then the base color here, I'm just going to make it a little bit darker. So it's kind of like a light gray. So something like that. And then I also want to add a bit of noise to the surface and I want to put the noise into the roughness. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a noise texture. Let's drop the noise texture here. And then I'm also going to be using the node wrangler add on. So if you don't have the node wrangler add on enabled, you can click on edit and you can go to the preferences. And then here over here on add ons, you can go to the search and you can type in node and you can enable the node wrangler add on. So now I'll close the user preferences and with the node wrangler enabled, you can select the noise texture and you can press control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And then let's use the object coordinates. So I'll plug the object into the vector. And then also the other feature of the node wrangler is you can hold down the control and shift key and you can select different nodes and that is going to preview the node on the object. So let's change some of the settings of the noise texture. So I'm going to turn the scale to like a 30. I'm also going to turn the detail up to the max of 15. And then this roughness here, I'm going to turn this up to like 8.6. So now this noise texture factor, I can put it into the roughness of the shader and I can control shift and select the principal shader. Now I want to change the roughness values a bit. So I'll go to the add menu and to change the roughness values, we can change the colors. So I'm going to be adding a color ramp. So I'll put the color up here after this noise texture. And then I can click here and I can drag this over and kind of drag it to about here. And the white tab, I can also drag this over, maybe drag it to about there. And then this black tab, I'm going to actually click on the color and I'm going to turn it up a little bit so it's kind of more gray. Because if I turn these values up, it's going to be more rough. But if I turn it down, it's going to be more shiny. So I'll turn this up a bit. And then this color here, this one I'm going to make a little bit darker so it's a bit more shiny. And you can just adjust those colors to get the roughness to how you like. I like how that roughness looks. So I now want to add an emission shader and I want the holes to be emitting light. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for the emission shader and let's drop the emission shader up here above the principal shader. And then what I want to do is actually duplicate this noise texture and I want to put the noise texture into the emission to give the emission some noise. So I'll select the noise and I'll press control shift D. So control shift D will duplicate the nodes, but keep the wires plugged up so we can still use the object coordinates. And then this noise texture factor that can go into the color of the emission. And then I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. And let's change some of the settings. So I'll turn the scale to like an eight. So it is a bit smaller and I'll leave the detail at 15. And then this roughness here, I'm going to turn this up to like a 0.7. So it looks more detailed. And then I can control shift and select the emission to actually preview what the emission is. Right now it kind of looks exactly the same, but on the emission strength here, I'm going to turn this up to like a nine. So it is brighter. Now I want to make this kind of look like red, almost like a lava texture. So I'm going to go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a color ramp. And let's put the color ramp here after this noise texture. So I can now change these two colors to change the colors of the noise. So this black color here, I'm going to click on this color and I'm going to make this a very bright color and then I'm going to make it a very bright red. And then this color here, this white color, I'm going to click on this color and I'm going to make this a very bright orange color. 
And then I can click and drag, and I'm going to drag these values together to make them more contrasty. So I'll drag the black value to about there, and I'll drag the orange value to about there. All right, so I can now control shift and select the principal shader again, and let's drag the material output back. So we have these two shaders, but I want to mix them together. So I'll go to the add menu, and I'm going to search for a mix shader. Let's click on the mix shader and drop it here before the material output. And the emission here, this can go into the top one. And then this principled shader here, this one can go into the bottom one. So now we're mixing the shaders together, but I want to just make the emission be where those dots are. So to do this, I'm going to click and drag to box select these nodes, and I'll bring them up a bit so we have more space here in the center. And I'm going to go to the Add menu, and I'm going to search for the Ambient Occlusion. Let's drop this here. And this Ambient Occlusion color, this can go into the factor. So the factor is determining what parts are going to be one shader and what parts are going to be the other shader. So right now, if you drag the factor, it's just blending between them. But we can take the Ambient Occlusion color, and we can put that into the factor. Now, I want to make it much more contrasty and strong so you can see what it's doing. So I'll select this color ramp, I'll press Shift to duplicate it, and I'll drop it here after this ambient occlusion. And then with the color ramp selected, I'll hit the backspace just to reset the color ramp. So I can now drag these values together to make them more contrasty. And you can see that the ambient occlusion is just going to change the colors of where those dark parts are and the light parts are. So if I control shift and select the color ramp to preview it, you can see that it's going to be darker just where the holes are. So I'll control shift and select the mix shader. So I'm going to drag the black tab to about there and then the white tab I'll drag to about there. So you can now see that that red lava -y texture is just in the center of those holes. And if you press the space bar to play the animation, that is looking very cool. So now let's just do a few more things to make the final render look nice. So I'll press Shift A for the Add menu, and let's go down here, and we're going to add an empty object, and we're going to place the empty in front of the object, and then use that to control the depth of field. So we'll add an empty, and I can move the empty here in front of the object, and I can also scale it down. And let's click back here on the layout because I don't need the shader editor anymore. And then I'm going to bring this over, and I'm going to stick this empty right here in front of the object. And then if I click here on the camera, I can click here on the camera data properties, and I'm going to click on the depth of field just to turn that on. And if I open up the depth of field, I can click on the focus object eyedropper, and then I can just choose the empty object. So here is the empty, just click on the empty, or you can choose on the drop down. And then if I go into the camera view by hitting the zero on the numpad, I can change the f stop to change how strong it is. And I'm going to turn the f stop to 0.6 so that you can see the edges there look a bit blurred. So that is looking very cool. Now I also want to change the bloom settings, that is going to be the glare. So if we go here to the render properties, I can open up the bloom here. And here on the radius, I'm going to turn the radius just to 5 so that it is a bit smaller. But then I do want to bring the intensity up. So the intensity, I'm going to turn to a 0.25. So 0.25, now you can see that's a bit stronger. And if you wanted to, you could also change the color, but I'm just going to leave it as white. So now we can render the animation to frames, and then in Blender's video editor, we'll compile them together, and we can also add the sound effects in Blender's video editor. So let's just go right over here to the output properties, and here in the file format, I'm going to choose the JPEG. You could use PNG if you want to. I'm going to choose JPEG, and then also the quality, I'll turn that to 100. And then I also need to set an output here, and I want to make a folder where all the frames are going to be in that folder. So I'm going to click on this file icon. And in my project files, I will click on the plus here to add a new folder. I can just rename this to frames, and then I can go inside the folder, and then I can just click on the accept button. So now it's going to render out all the frames to images inside that folder. So then press Ctrl S to save your project, and you can click on render, and you can choose render animation. And then you can just come back when all of the frames are rendered, and I'm just going to open up a completely new Blender file. So you can just save and close the other Blender file and open up a completely new file. And then you can click here on the Video Editing tab. Now if you don't have the Video Editing tab, you can click on the plus here, and you can go to Video Editing and just choose Video Editing. Another way to do this is to click on File, and you can choose New, and you can choose a new Video Editing. So just go to the video editing layout, and then here in the sequencer, you can press Shift A for the add menu, and let's go here to image and sequence. And then you can just locate to the folder where you saved all the frames. You can press the A key to make sure all the frames are selected, and you can also click here on the drop down, and you can make sure that the sort by is set to name so that it's actually going to sort the frames in the correct order. And then you can click on add image strip. Now what you want to do is select the strip, and you want to click here on strip, 
and you want to click on set render size. So it is actually going to set the render size of the frames. And then I want to make this be a looping animation. So here on the end frame, I'm just going to turn this up really high to like a thousand. So I'll turn it to a thousand. You can just make it as long as you want. And if I now select the group of frames, I can press shift D to duplicate and I can click right here and it'll drop it there. So now if I play this, you can see as it gets over here to the end, you can see that it's a seamless looping animation. So you can just continue to duplicate these as many times as you want to have a looping animation. I'm just going to have it loop twice though. And so I'm setting the end frame to a thousand because it's 500 frames. And so two of them is going to be a thousand frames. And then I also want to add in the sound effects that I downloaded from freesound.org. So I'm going to press shift A and I'll choose sound. And I'm going to first be adding in this bubble echoes sound effects. So I'll open this up. Again, links are in the description to the free sound effects that I'm downloading from freesound.org. And I'm going to drag the sound effect up here. And then what I'm also going to do is click on display waveform so I can actually see it. And then I want to make this play much slower. So if you click on the sound effect and click on time, you can click on show retiming keys. And this is a newer feature of Blender in the latest Blender version. So if you click on that, now there's going to be a keyframe here and a keyframe here. So you can select the keyframe and you can hit G to grab and then you can drag it out. And this will make the speed much slower. So now if I play this, then this sound effect is going to be much slower. And I like how it sounds when it's going much slower. And then also what I want to do is click on the sound effect and I want to turn the volume to two so that it is a bit louder. And then I want to have a bit more of these bubbly sounds. So I'll press shift D to duplicate it and I'll drop it over here, but I'm going to offset it so that they're not going to be playing at the same exact spot. So now there's kind of double those sounds. And then I also want to add in that ambience. So I'll go to the add menu with shift A and I can again choose sound. This time I'm going to be adding in this dune sound effect. Again, the link will be in the description to the sound effect on freesound.org. I'll click on add sound strip and I can hit G to grab and move this up here. And then here on the volume, I'm going to turn this way down to maybe just like a 0.1 or a 0.2. So it is pretty quiet. I'm also going to click on the display waveform so I can see it. And then I can play through this and I can just move it where I want by hitting G to grab and I can just move this around and I can just get it to a spot where I want. So it kind of just adds some nice ambience in the background. And if you want to make this slower as well, you can open up the time setting and choose the show retiming keys. And then you can click on the keys here and you can drag them out. And this is going to make the ambience slower and it's kind of going to make it darker pitched. All right, so once you have done all your video editing, we can just turn this into a final video. So right here on the output, you can just save it wherever you want by clicking on the file icon. I'll just save it on my desktop and I'll click here and I'm just going to call it loop because it's a looping animation. And then here on the file format, I'm going to use FFmpeg video. That's the file format I like to use. Let's also open up the encoding here and I'm going to use the container of MPEG-4. I'm also going to use the video codec of H.264 and I'll choose medium quality and good for the quality there. And then also if you have audio, I'm going to use the audio codec of AAC. All right, so then if you want to, you can save this video editing project and then you can click here on render and you can click on render animation. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to purchase the finished project files, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page with the links in the description. And if you're more of a beginner to geometry nodes, then I definitely recommend checking out my geometry nodes for complete beginners tutorial series. So it's a completely free tutorial series on my YouTube channel. You can find the link in the description and I teach you the basics of geometry nodes. And then we create this cool flower generator where you can draw curves and it will generate flower on the curves. So definitely check out that tutorial. And you can also check out my Geometry Nodes tutorial playlist to learn how to make more things in Geometry Nodes. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you for watching.